Hi everyone! Welcome to episode 3, part 1 of my Design and Code With Me series. Today, I will be working on a trailer website for an upcoming cozy pixel art video game that I'm working on with my team. The name of our game is Wistful Orchids, and my sister, My Sweet Chubbs, is the main visionary and artist behind the world we're building together. I'll be showing you my workflow and tips and tricks while moodboarding and designing the Wistful Orchids trailer website. In episode 3, part 2, I will be showing how I bring my design to life and actually develop it using React, as well as go through some of my favorite VS Code extensions that help with my web dev workflow. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified when that's released on my channel. I'm also happy to announce that Milano is the sponsor of today's video. Many of you wanted to see my mood boarding app of choice, so I'm so happy to partner with Milanote for this video to share with you how I use this app to gather my inspiration and put together high fidelity mood boards for all of my creative projects. Be sure to check out Milanote in the link in the description below. So I used Milanote to translate my rough sketches and ideas into high fidelity mood boards that we'll be able to work with. Creating high fidelity mood boards is a crucial step to my workflow and it enables me to get a feel for the website that I'm creating and it's a step in my process that grounds me to research. So when you dive straight into designing, you want to be able to create designs that are tested and proven and it's important and healthy to be inspired by designs all around us while making it still our own. So while you're doing all sorts of research and exploration, you're able to really hone in on what color language you'll be using, art style, typography, and website flow. So what I really love about Milano is how easy and natural it is to craft a high fidelity mood board that encompasses all of these different things. And it's really well organized for anyone to come in and get the gist of what design, tone, and mood that we're going for. So I'm starting off by creating a general mood board for this game as a whole. So when starting a new project, I think it's important to take the time to write out its fundamental concepts. So for Wistful Orchids, I took the time to define a few important things about the game. What kind of game it was, the experience the player would have when playing it, and the ultimate goal to be reached as you progress through that game. So once I had finished that, I started to research games that would be in the same space. It's good to look at what's already out there to see what they do right, what they can improve on, and how to differentiate your product from everything else. Milanote has an awesome browser extension that makes it super easy to save pictures, links, texts, anything on the internet to be added to your mood board later for future reference. So here I'm just pulling in the concept art that My Sweet Chubbs created to illustrate various scenes in her game. I'm going to be using this art to help define the feeling and appearance of the website. So you can take your cards and place them into columns to keep your mood board clean and organized. The last thing I'm going to put on the general game mood board are the colors that will primarily make up the color palette used throughout the website. Colors can really influence how the users feel when they look at something, so I made sure that the colors I picked captured the essence of the art that my sister created. So within this project, there's a few things that I created dedicated mood boards for. The game logo, website, and pixel art style. I'll be walking through my mood board for the website in this video, since I'll be the one primarily designing and coding it. So first I wanted to reference a bunch of popular cozy games out there, and their websites. I took a few screenshots of these websites and I dragged them onto Milanote for easy reference and so I can jot down my observations next to it. I was looking to get a better understanding of what successful game websites are doing. So I'm looking to use these websites for inspiration, but it's important to ensure that what you're designing is unique to you. After browsing all of these different websites, I noticed that they each had similar sections. These indie game trailer websites each have one, an attractive hero graphic or image to draw people's attention and gain interest in the game. 
2, a section that briefly shares a bit about the game and its features, and 3, a CTA or call to action section so people can enter their email to subscribe to the game update newsletter and follow the game's social media channels. After jotting these things down, I start to really hone in on ideas on how I can incorporate similar sections onto my own website and how I can share them. So that completes my website mood board. I really defined what things I want to include in the website. One, an attractive hero banner section with the logo of the game and an animated illustration representative of the game. Two, a game feature section to explain different features that the game will have. And three, a CTA section so users can enter the email address to subscribe to the newsletter and follow the game's social media platforms. My sister, Ashley, also known as My Sweet Chubbs on Instagram, is the creative director and visionary of the game that we're creating. And she created additional mood boards. One, for the logo of the game that she'll be illustrating. And two, the pixel art style that she wants to create. So now that my mood boards are complete, I'm ready to start designing on Figma. I wanted to create a design that really showcased the concept art. Here I'm playing around with the general layout of the page and a preliminary logo design. I decided that the art should be front and center to provide a very immersive experience. The user should feel like they're being pulled into the world that the art is creating when they visit the website. I decided to use a carousel to switch between the different scenes. Now that my design is a little more solidified, I put a grid system into place to serve as a guide for component placement. This will improve design to code handoff and it'll save a lot of time later down the line. Now I'm experimenting with the look of the email signup input. Since I'm trying to place all of the focus on the concept art, it was very important to ensure that the input element wasn't too distracting. I changed the color of the sign up button to complement the predominant colors of the current scene. This way, the input form wouldn't be so obtrusive. Next, I worked on designing the indicators that show which scene is being displayed. I wanted to give users the ability to change the artwork at will so that if a certain scene really resonated with them, they could navigate to it directly. I planned on having it so that the artwork changes automatically after a certain delay. This way, even if the user doesn't interact with the indicators, all of the artwork will still get to be displayed. While I was working on designing the website, I decided that it would be cool if I introduced some subtle animations to ease the transition from scene to scene. Here, I'm linking the images with each other to define the order of the scenes and creating a simple dissolve animation. So now that I've got a more concrete design for the website, it's time to make our design smarter and reusable by taking advantage of Figma components. Figma components are a great way to create reusable styles. Typically, you have a parent component and children components that sync with the parent component's style. I've made a component for the email input and four variants of that component to reflect the different button colors present in my design. As you can see, I can edit the color of this button and it reflects wherever I'm using that variant. Here I'm creating more components for other elements present in the website. I created a small footer component for the site to house links to the game's Steam page, Instagram, and Twitter. Lastly, I just made a simple sound icon to allow the user to toggle whether to play the background music that will be present on the site. And with that, we're done with designing the website. I just want to mention that these are the highlights of my design process, and these are just some tips and insight into how I design. I didn't go into the whole entire process, otherwise this video would be super long. I wanted to show you guys all of the different images and components that I created during this process. 
So here are all the components and variants that I created for the site. I ended up adding some more colors for the sign up button's hover states. Here is all of the concept art and here are the final Figma frames that make up the website. With that, let's go through our final design. So when the website first loads in, it fades in from black and the logo, email input, and social links slide up and fade in from the bottom of the screen and they ease into place. I can interact with the indicator to switch between the different scenes. The dissolve animation of the different concept arts really helps smooth out the transition. You can also see the sign up button color change to complement the artwork better. All in all, I think this is a really nice minimal design that does a great job showcasing the concept art for the upcoming game that we're working on. Again, stay tuned for part 2 of this episode where we're actually going to be developing this website using React. We'll also be adding a game feature section to the site, which I mentioned in the mood boarding session, so that people have a better understanding of what's to come. Best of all, we'll be featuring some snippets of the pixel art we've been working on and a sneak peek of the gameplay itself. So thank you again to Milanote for sponsoring this video. Go check them out using the link I've included in my description. It's an amazing mood boarding tool and one that I use daily. See you in the next one.